Hey, hey, I'm Shay Keister, and I'm your host for the Casual Cattle Conversations podcast, the beef producer's place to explore new management practices. Thanks for tuning in, and welcome to the community. Hey, folks, you are working to preserve the ground for the next generation. Shouldn't your cow herd be built for the future, too? Neogen is the industry leader in beef cattle DNA testing. They built the first DNA test for commercial cattle and continue to make advancements every day. Igenity Beef is a DNA technology that will help you select the most desirable females based on their true genetic potential with 17 traits, 3 custom indexes, and parentage. Watch Igenity Beef catapult your genetic selections by assisting in selecting only the females that meet your operation's genetic goals. Use code RADIO to get 20% off your next Igenity Beef order. Learn more about how Igenity Beef can aid you in selection, management, and marketing opportunities of each calf crop and your herd. Go to neogen.com or call 877 877- Four four three six four eight nine, and that code and website are also in the show notes. Hey folks, it is Shay here and you get me as your guest for the podcast episode today and I'm super excited to be here. Now today we're going to be talking about things that my dad and I did to help each other thrive, I guess, during year one of me being back on the ranch. I guess maybe he doesn't feel like he thrived, but I, I did. Um, that I mean, there are definitely highs and lows. I, I use thrive knowing that within thriving, there are highs and lows, right? But for the most part, I'm very proud of my parents and I for um, the communication we had and other areas that we implemented, different skills or ideas that kind of helped us um, really get along and work together well during my first year back. Now, before we kind of dive into that, I do want to remind you that if you are looking for anyone for any speaking engagements, whether that's speaking to classes, um, speaking in Facebook live groups, webinars at your next live event, I love in-person events or doing any workshops, I am booking those those gigs right now. So that is open. Just head over to my website and go to the contact me page and uh, you can message me there. So with that, let's talk about four things just going to be quick episodes. So four things that my parents and I did to make year one a smooth transition or as smooth as it can be. So number one, I'm going to talk about boundaries. So before I came back, we're going to talk about boundaries in a couple different ways, but before I came back, like I knew I was moving back to my hometown, right? I knew I wanted to do that. I wanted to be closer to my family. I wanted to be closer to my boyfriend who was now my fiance. Like it was just time to come back after being away for four years. So for those of you who don't know, I grew up in North Dakota, born and raised, um, loved being involved in my family's operation. But what I, I really wanted to get out of the state for a while. And so I went to college at the University of Nebraska Lincoln. I was super excited about their animal science program, the beef scholars program. And really specifically, I went down there for the Angler Agribusiness Entrepreneurship Program. And that's kind of how I got this podcast started. So if we like go back like a year, over a year from when I'm recording this, right? Um, I knew I was going to move back to my hometown after graduation. It's something I had talked about with my parents. I wanted to take the leap and work on my own business. I also had another side job with that at that point. And I knew I would have some time to work on the ranch too. Dad really wasn't planning on having me come back right away. I mean, I knew he needed the help and wanted the help, but um, my parents wanted me to do my own thing. And so before I came back, I remember being in the basement of my college house, having this conversation with dad. And he was, you know, what, what are your plans? What are you going to do? You're coming back like all this. And I told him, I said, well, if you pay me, I would be willing to come back and work on the ranch. I said, I don't know what that looks like. I think the fairest thing, the way I want to start out right now is let's do hourly. I even up on my cow costs. Cause I've got cows with you too. So we'll just adjust that and make things fair that way. And so that's what we did. We agreed that he would be paying me. Um, I set the I set the number for how much I'd get paid by the hour. And uh, that's just something we've done. Now, is that the best way to do it? I don't know. But I was being compensated for my time. And I was also, you know, taking care of my own cow costs too and factoring in that some of my labor would go towards my cows as well, right? We figured it out. But 
that was a huge thing for me was that I was willing to help and wanted to help on the ranch because I knew I was getting compensated. I wasn't just going to be free labor, right? I didn't have time for that. And so that was one thing that really, I think, helped me show up better when I'd come and work on the ranch or want to do that or be willing to help is like knowing that, hey, I'm going to get paid. And so that's something that we talked about as well. Um, The other boundary we set would be where my time was. We talked about how I could not be full-time on the ranch. That doesn't mean that there might not have been times where that wasn't fully respected, but also that's a two-way street, right? There are busy times of year where maybe I should have planned a little better and known that I should have been able to allocate more hours to the ranch during those weeks. It just you It's a learning curve. Anyone who works multiple jobs as well as being on the ranch understands how that goes. And But the biggest thing was that I, my parents knew I could not be full-time on the operation. I was working on my own business. That was priority number one. I was working for another company. That was priority number two. And then there was ranch, which was number three. And I, you know, and I knew I wanted to shift the ranch up. And so eventually I did quit my other job once I got my other business to that point. But it was something where I knew I had split time. My dad knew he had to respect that. My mom knew she had to respect that. Um, But I also knew I had to respect that there's some things you just can't plan for on the ranch, right? It's, you got to be flexible. And so we were just in acknowledgement of that and had clear boundaries. And I was just upfront with a lot of things. And we'll talk about that later when we get to number three. So that was number one, set boundaries. Number two, I had my own business. Now, I mentioned earlier that my parents weren't really expecting me to come back to the ranch right away. Like the plan was for me to kind of work in industry if I wanted to, then figure out if I wanted to come back, um, all this. And so when I came back, part of the reason I was okay with coming back and being on the ranch right away after graduating from college is because I knew I had my own business, my own thing to keep me busy. I don't believe in finding your identity in your work, but I do think in some ways we always will, especially in agriculture, because it's just a part of us. But it allowed me to kind of separate and segregate. Like when I came back from my com- back to my community, when people asked what I did, I'd start with saying I had a podcast. I didn't just say, well, I'm back on the ranch. And there's by no means there's nothing wrong with that. It's just something that I needed to talk about how I've been building my own personal brand too, because that's important. Now, having my own business and, you know, paying people to do work for me here and there. I've got some people who help with editing, website work and whatnot. I understand that it's important that when you're paying someone to do stuff, they get it done, they show up, they're timely, all that. And that's just something that having that experience with my own business has helped me show up as a better employee on the family ranch. Not saying I was a slacker before, but it is a completely different mindset when you are working for your parents through high school and college, kind of not really getting paid. I mean, I had cows on the place. They'd help pay for gas and obviously phone bills, stuff like that. Right. So I was getting paid in other ways, but it was just a summer job. And I always had internships and other jobs during college in the summers when I was back too. So it was never a full-time deal. It was a different mindset when I came back and I was like, this is part of your job you know, take responsibility for it. What direction do you want to see the ranch go? And all these things, it helps me show up better as an employee of the ranch. Cause that, and that's how I try to think about it. And my parents are good. Um, they're great to work with. I mean, um, so it, that helped a lot too. I don't feel like I'm just an employee. I definitely feel like if I have an opinion, I'm going to voice it. Although if you know me, It's probably going to happen anyways. I don't mind sharing my opinion this at all most days. So, but it just helped me show up because I know what it's like to have a business and run a business and have someone working for you. And I know how I want people to show up. And so I try to do that when I show up on the ranch. Now, I'm not perfect at it. Like no one's perfect. We're all people. And that's just something if I'm having a bad day or a bad week, I try and pull myself out of. So that was number two, having my own business or, you know, own job. I would recommend that to other people is have your own side hustle hobby, something else that can teach you how to show up to your family's operation better and treat it like a business. 
um, whatever that looks like for you. Hey folks, I want to take a quick break from the episode to talk about my friends at Corel Technologies. Corel Technologies is changing the way cattle producers cross fence and utilize their pastures with their easy to use and cost effective virtual fencing program. Virtual fencing allows you to save time, cut costs, and get the most out of your grazing lands by remotely containing, moving, and tracking your cows. This was designed by a cow-calf producer for cow-calf producers. Check out their podcast episode with me from July 27th to get an in-depth look at the process of virtual fencing and how it is impacting the beef industry as we know it today. If you would like to see the system work in person, feel free to reach out through their website about field days. You can also find more information on their website, www.corraltech.com. Now, number three scheduling. Now, my grandpa and my dad used to make fun of me for having such a strict schedule. You know, my grandparents, you know, my grandma, she's such a free spirit. She'd say, well, you just need to learn to live a little more. Quit. Don't be in that planner so much, all this stuff. And you know what? She's probably right. So grandma Jan, if you're listening, you are probably right. But at the same time, having that schedule it's given me more freedom and the ability to do all these things. I'm someone who gets bored easily. So like just being full-time with my podcast doesn't feel right. Just being full-time on the ranch doesn't feel right. Just working for another business doesn't feel right. Like I have to be doing all these things to help keep me stimulated, keep my mind going. And it, it helps me show up to all three better as long as I'm organized. So the schedule deal, this actually started when I was in college because when COVID hit, I came back to the ranch because I didn't want to live in Lincoln when all my friends were gone and I was, I, I would get terribly homesick in college anyway. So it was fun to just come back to the ranch and I was excited and I was, I had some commercial spring cows that I was calving out with my grandpa. So I got to do college and calving and all that stuff, but I still had college in addition to all this ranch work where I was, we had no hired man. So it was just me. And it was like, okay. So what I learned to do was at the beginning of every week, I would take out my schedule for what I needed. And I would, you know, say, okay, I have a chem test on Thursday. That means you absolutely do not get any of my help for half a Thursday and all of Wednesday, because I need to study. Plus I have these other classes, all this stuff, but I can help you here and here on Monday, Tuesday. Here's how I can help after the test. Here's what I can do in the evenings. Here's what I can do in the mornings. Like I just showed my dad my schedule and when I was available. And I, I started doing that with my grandpa and dad again when I came back because at when I came back, I had, you know, this podcast in the Rancher Minds as well as when I was working with NSG. And it was just something where I had to say, okay, it's spring. You want to do work calves in the spring before we turn out for breeding. Great. But I cannot do it on these days. Or if we do it on these days, it has to be after this time, or I have to leave at this time. And that's something we've been flexible with. And I've just been honest with and sharing those schedules. And as I talked about earlier, it's not perfect. Sometimes I have to move meetings. Sometimes dad has to push stuff off a day. Sometimes they have, sometimes grandpa had to find other help or dad had to find other help. It, it, it just, it's something we've worked around. Sometimes my mom had to move stuff around so that she could help when I couldn't. Sometimes I move stuff around so that I could help because mom couldn't. Like, it's just something that we do and we try to be cognizant of and respect. And the other aspect of that is like, we synchronize all our cows when we're for AIing. And so I plan, you know, dad and I plan in advance. I'll print out a calendar and we'll get those dates on the calendar. So that way I can just, block off my calendar so that I don't schedule any meetings. So that way I don't overload myself with CCC things when I know I'm going to have a lot of ranch stuff to do. So that's just the third thing is scheduling. And that's really helped. Okay. So that was our three of the four. So let's talk about number four. Number four was being honest about the future. So I, when I came back, it's not like I was coming back and saying, yep, I'm going to take over the place. Like, this is what I want to do hundred percent. I'm all in. That wasn't true. I didn't know what I want. Some days I'm still not sure what I want. I said, I can come back and I can work for you. I have interest in taking over. I have interest in being a greater part of this, but 
not 100% sure I got my own stuff to figure out right now. I had a very serious boyfriend. We're now engaged. That's super exciting. And we all saw this coming down the road, right? Like we knew it was going to happen. Um, so, but it was just a matter of when, and we had to let that stuff work out too. And my fiance and I actually are going to be living on his family's farm and focusing on that right away. Right. So I'll only be like 45 ish minutes away from my parents' place. If the roads are good, I guess 45 minutes is record time. Um, good thing there weren't any cops that day, but, uh, it, it's something we had to be honest with that, you know, I was, I had my own partner to build a life with. We have to do what we want to. And while I definitely want to be involved in my family's operation, I want to be the fifth generation that finds a way to take that over. It's something where we knew it wasn't going to be me being there every day. Like that's not feasible. I don't want to make that drive every day. That's not something I want to do. It's something where we have as a family have to figure that out and figure out what's going to work for us. And that's just something we were honest about. We were honest about it even before I came back. I mean, I remember having that conversation with my dad in December and I graduated in May, right? Like it was a lot of, well, I don't know exactly what I want to do, but I know I want to be involved. I know I want to see this legacy continue, right? And so that's something that we were just honest about. And we were honest about the fact that there can be a lot of unknowns. And I had to, but me admitting that there were unknowns, I kind of had to be okay with just being an hourly employee too. Like that's just a part of it. And, you know, we're in having those unknowns, it's actually allowed us to think through different um, strategies and ideas of what the future could look like. And so that's just something that we're really, we're honest about. And, um, being honest about knowing what I couldn't do and what I can do and not being afraid to have those conversations. I'm not saying they're easy to start, but I will say like it was easier to fight through starting the conversation than to just not have it and leave things unsaid. So even if there are a lot of unknowns and maybe you just need to say like, hey, I don't know this or this or this, but I do know this right now, I'd say it's worth having. So just be honest about the communication about everything, really honest about communication has been great for um, all areas of being back on the ranch. So those are the four tips I have for you. If you are either looking at bringing back another generation to the ranch, or if you are the next generation coming back on, think through about your boundaries, how you are going to learn, how you are going to have your own thing that teaches you how to show up to your ranch outside of just being on the ranch, um, how you can be flexible with schedules if you have other outside jobs or whatnot. And um, just be honest about the communicate, be honest about communicating um, and about what you want in the future. So that way everyone's on the same page. And so, yeah, those are my four tips. Um, my final bonus tip would definitely be to think about the mindset you have going into it and really look at everything as an opportunity to learn. Um, one thing was that I always had lots of big ideas when I came back and I still do, but um, I needed to learn a lot too. And so when you show up every day, whether you had a good day or a bad day, learn from it, especially during that first year, because there are a lot of highs and lows. So really have that learning mindset. That's the bonus tip. And I mean, take that with you every day, no matter what you do. Right. But I think that's something that especially helped me out a lot during that first year back on the ranch. So if you like these tips, let me know. Um, if you're on Spotify, you can comment now. If you're on Apple, I don't believe they've fully released that feature yet. If they are coming out, I just know you can interact with me on Spotify podcast. You can also email me my emails in the show notes. That's casual cattle conversations at gmail.com. Um, also the best way to support podcasters is to share episodes you like on social media, send them to your friends, whatever it may be, send the show, give a rating that really, um, those ratings and sharing those information and sharing any podcast episodes really helps us out. So I appreciate it. I appreciate you all for listening. And with that, I will catch you guys next week. Have a great day. And 
that's a wrap on that one, folks. Thank you for tuning in today and joining in on the conversation. Be sure to take this a step further and take the advice you learned and implement it on your operation. If you want to have a conversation about it, head over to my social media and send me a DM by following at Cattle Convos and connecting with me there. Have a great day.